What's up guys, Jason Massey here and welcome to a new scoreboard on my channel and today I'm bringing a potential England team for the 2014 World Cup next summer and if you want to see more of these make sure to smash 1000 likes and if you're looking to purchase some ultimate team coins go check out thefeefshop.co.uk the links will be below in the description as well as a discount code and finally leave a comment below let me know what nations you'd like me to do in future episodes of these and with your comments make sure the team has actually already qualified for the World Cup otherwise it may be a little bit pointless. Starting things off then with the goalkeeper, we have gone with the 4-2-3 on wide formation by the way and there are a lot of alternatives that you could go with like 4-4-1-1 and stuff like that. Uh, we've gone with the 4-2-3 on wide as for me it's more preferred but in goal we have got Manchester City's Joe Hart. Joe Hart has of course been in the, like, the media a lot recently due to pretty much poor performances for Man City and I kind of think he needs to step up his game if he's going to guarantee his main spot in the England team but I don't think he will lose it anytime soon. Like, it's kind of a weird one, like, his, his performances haven't been great but I still think that he'll keep that number one spot in goal. England's alternative goalkeepers, we have got John Ruddy of Norwich and a Fraser Forster of Celtic. Forster, I believe, should be given a go in like a friendly. I think he might be. Um, but other than that, I don't think Joe Hart will lose his uh, spot anytime soon. At right back then, we are going to have Liverpool's Glenn Johnson. Glenn Johnson, of course, hasn't been the last uh, couple of qualifiers simply the fact that he has been injured. And uh, there are a lot of alternatives to right back, such as Kyle Walker. Chris Morning can play there. And also Arsenal's Kyle Jenkinson. He's starting to come into it a little bit more. And I think Glenn Johnson is uh, Hodgson's uh, right preferred player but I can see Kyle Walker sneaking in there if he does keep up his performances. On to the centre backs then we're going to do both of these at the same time. We have Jack Yelka of uh, Everton and the other centre back is going to be Gary Cahill but I'm going to quickly swap these there. Uh, Gary Cahill and Jack Yelka they're actually quite a good partnership at the back now. Uh, Cahill of course he plays for Chelsea and uh, Jack Yelka for Everton and the alternative centre backs so for England are Chris Smalling. Like I said he could play right back as well. Uh, Phil Jones can also play right back or CDM. Lesko or Stephen Corker. Of, of course there's a lot more players that could potentially uh, come up during the season but I think they are the main ones on the top of the list. Going on to left back then we've got our first in form that is Leighton Baines. Baines is uh, in my opinion England's best left back at the moment but again there are tons of left backs coming into things there such as Ashley Cole has been around for ages now but he's kind of fallen out of favour in the England team. We've got Kieran Gibbs being recently called up and also the 18 year old Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw has been fantastic for uh, Southampton. I definitely feel that if he carries on going he could warrant himself a, a call up to the World Cup next summer. Our more defensive midfielders then, we're going to start things off with the captain himself, which is Steven Gerrard. He's going to go across to the right CDM and left centre defensive mid. This this could be a difficult one because we've, we have gone with Carrick, but the holding centre mids or just centre mids in general, there are a ton. So I'm going to go through them now. We have got the option of Jack Wilshere, Lampard, Ross Barkley, who's been really, really good at the moment, but he's more attacking minded, uh, Cleverly and Ravel Morrison. Ravel Morrison has been doing really, really well for West Ham and he's been doing well for the under 21. So I feel that they're, they're hit, like, there's a few in there in particular that could make their name in the uh, World Cup next year, but we'll see. And also the other two names are John Joe Shelby and Jordan Henderson. At left midfield, England actually played this guy, which is actually a striker on my team. I haven't played him there when I played with the team. I, I used Ashley Young instead. But they do use Danny Welbeck, who is there. Danny Welbeck plays as a wider left left side player for England. And the alternatives for him, if he was to get dropped, are Ashley Young and there's not many, but Raheem Sterling as well. There's a couple more that could play that side, but they aren't out and out left wingers. At the right mid spot, then we have got this guy's coming to things. That is Andros Townsend in form. But a big, big thank you to Footwiz, in particular Ruin, because he actually allowed me to borrow him and what a legend he is. If you don't go check out Footwiz, their link will be in the description below. But Townsend in this game was really, really poor. He didn't really get in the game much and he just seemed really, really weak. But Townsend, in real life, uh, he's only played two games for England now, but he's been fantastic. Uh, I don't overhype him yet. But he has just signed a new four-year contract at Spurs as well. So this guy is proving to be a little a little talent. And also the other right mids that could be there instead are uh, Theo Walcott, of course, who I feel will feature again uh, for England soon. Uh, James Milner, the more defensive-minded. Oxley Chamberlain, who hasn't really been playing much. And also Wilfred Zaha. Um, again, there's a few of them that don't really play that much. But Oxley Chamberlain can also play down the middle. Finally then, on to our more attacking minor players. The cam is actually going to be a kind of a centre forward, which is Wayne Rooney. In real life, he doesn't play as a cam. He actually plays wherever he wants, really. Uh, on this game, he's actually not too bad, but he didn't really get a great goal-to-game ratio. Overall, was decent to play with, but again, not the, not the most prolific of players. But there are a lot of alternatives that England have. I'll go to the striker option, and I believe if this guy keeps it up, he'll definitely be one of the first names on the team sheet. He hasn't been great for England, but for Liverpool, uh, the team I support, he has been absolutely superb. That is Daniel Sturridge, and he's, he's overpowered in this game. He's so, so quick. Uh, but in real life, the alternative strikers for England are Ricky Lambert of Southampton. He does he has a, had a few games uh, pre, uh, prior to this, that's the one, uh, when Sturridge was injured, and he has actually been scoring. So Lambert could be on that um, on the plane to Brazil in the summer. 
And we've got Jermaine Defoe again. He's usually at tournaments because he's quite a prolific uh, scorer. Oh, he's good in front of goal at least. And finally, Andy Carroll, probably the least likely due to injuries and stuff. But Carroll, if he starts showing more, could potentially get a call up. So there we have it. There is a team that might not be the like the final formation and stuff, but I think that's the closest we're going to get as to now. And if you do, what like I said before, if you're dealing with me to do more of these, make sure to smash 1,000 likes. And also, don't forget to subscribe for day 14 content. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching the video.